Hello there, Flip here, and today, since we just got the Fontaine teaser thing, in which I have only one word to say, what the fuck is this? But because of the teaser, I thought it would be fun to look at possible things in Fontaine that Genshin could add, that majority of the player base would probably agree would make the game a lot better and a lot more enjoyable. But before we do that, as always, if at any point during the video you're entertained or informed, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing, as... Oh wait, this isn't a meta video. This is your canon event, and you know you just don't want to break the canon, so without further ado, let's go over the first thing Fontaine needs to do, which is... Depending on how much emphasis Hoyu puts on water versus ex- I- I just- Depending on how much emphasis Hoyerverse puts on water exploration, whether it's just going to be a Fontaine thing, or this changes all of the water in Genshin, and by how much, I think this is probably going to be one of the biggest things Genshin has to do well with Fontaine, which is going to be really hard because for most games that don't have a water focus, water mechanics are generally dog shit. Genshin's current water mechanics are dog shit. How much stamina is swimming underwater going to take? How fast will it be? Do we constantly have to go up for air or are there going to be oxygen points or something? Do I get to see Eula wearing a bikini while she jiggles in 120 FPS? We also seem to be able to do attacks or use a certain gadget in this small teaser we got. But can we fight underwater and if so that is just something else they're going to have to nail well. And if a lot of the water mechanics aren't implemented well, this will just overall ruin the enjoyment of the region. In Sumeru, we got, um, swinging as our main exploration mechanic, which I think we can mostly agree is a pretty good mechanic. It's fast, takes little effort, allows us to cover a lot of ground, and is overall convenient. But with swimming, it isn't just an exploration mechanic. Deep diving is the exploration itself. And visually, water isn't the most aesthetic environment to express creativity. You can definitely make interesting ocean and water environments, but do I need to remind you guys, what Genshin did to the desert region of Sumeru, it's just sand with only a few stand-up places. If Fontaine's ocean exploration is just... water, <laughs> I don't think it will keep many people engaged, especially if the water movement sucks on top of it. But that's all I can really say now, moving on to I think the second most important thing Fontaine needs to include. We are three years into Genshin, and I can only tell you a handful of things that have happened that have actually progressed this story in any meaningful way. Even Nahida saying that the sibling was in the Ir- Ir- Irmin's soul records still doesn't help the traveler get any closer to their goal at all. Each Archon quest is also extremely self-contained. The event is leading to months that had no bearing on the events in Liwei, and the events in Liwei had no bearing on the events in the Inazuma story. Well, to be fair, I guess Skara getting the Gnosis did have an impact massively on Sumeru's story, but that's really it, and it's also an event the Traveller had no control over. We just got knocked out, Yai was a bitch and fluked. Besides that, the Traveller just goes to a region, fixes all of its problems with little consequence while learning nothing, and then on to the next nation. Genshin as a continuous narrative is kind of just not that great. Old characters are barely ever mentioned again because we need space for the new ones, most of which barely ever get developed or characterized because we have so little time with them. The most tragic thing to ever happen to a character was an NPC, which they were also too afraid to outwardly say they died, and they were also never brought up again. Hi, it is post-editing flip here, and I just now realized that, oh yeah, Signora died, which actually leads into the next thing I was going to say perfectly, but yeah, um, for anyone commenting, it, what do you mean Signora died? I just genuinely forgot that was a thing that happened. To sum it up, Genshin has a stakeless story, which considering we are on the, the fifth region now needs to change. You can say this story is building up to something, sure, but it's not like you can replay this story anyways. By the time that something happens, it would have already been theorized or forgotten. So the impact... Get, get, get. The impact wears off. The things we did in Sumeru need to have consequences and impact the story going on in Fontaine. And in Fontaine, we need to seriously ramp up the stakes and build the endgame of the story. Otherwise, it will just fall flat and be lackluster. How do I say this nicely? Most of the Inazuma and Sumeru 4 stars were <laughs> Although some weren't that bad, Farazan being the best nation port we have, and Toma and Kuki being good reaction damage dealers, a majority of them you will just never use or don't do anything to set them apart from other characters. And the only thing worse than being bad is being boring. How many people really give a fuck about Hazel or Dory? And don't even get me started on how bad hangouts are. They are tedious and unfun and don't cover any of the actual interesting things about the characters. And if you aren't going to expand on the character stories, at least let us just the characters or something. 
because that is the only reason people are doing them besides the primal gem incentive anyways. Also the fact that we have more 5 stars than 4 stars currently just isn't healthy at all for the game. We are generally getting to the point of needing triple banners for the amount of 5 stars we have, because in case you need a reminder, it took them 6 hundred days to rerun eula if characters as cool as ningguan kaya or beido aren't five stars then why are people who run basic day jobs like hu tao yoimiya tignari and nilo do i need to go on we first just need more four stars then we need more four stars that aren't just diluting the character pool and then we need to actually expand on the characters backstories and personalities and hangouts no one wants units they can't use and no one wants units that aren't interesting gameplay or story wise either kirara is one of the most well received four stars and that's because she actually serves a purpose being a four star dendro shielder and she can also turn into a box which is interesting and fun and actually hold that thought because let's talk about more and more units are just starting to overlap and serve the same role in a team which also is not healthy and I think needs to be augmented. We've got three defensive dendro options basically back to back. The last pyro character we had was Deya who shares a lot in common with Toma as defensive pyro options that also have offensive coverage. The last time we got a cryo unit that wasn't an off fielder was Ayaka. Electro has been pretty diverse actually, but even then, Kuki and Dory share some traits. With Geo, the only two out of seven characters we have don't scale with defense. And then with Hydro, Yolan and Jinkcho are literally the same unit with minor tweaks. TLDR, while I did at least think it was fine that certain elements did certain things specifically, unless they are really fun, which most characters are off field units, they can't exactly have a lot of gameplay expression. Then you never really have reasons to use them, which if you do like the characters doesn't feel the best. The fact that only Animo characters can group give the element a unique identity, but if we were to get a Hydro, Geo, or Pyro grouper for example, there are a lot of interesting and fun synergies that could open up expanding the depth of gameplay a lot. I think there is a way to make characters similar but not the same, look at Sucrus and Kaza for example. They are both quite similar and can be used as a one to one in a lot of teams, but they have enough differences to separate them which makes talking about and playing them interesting. I also think like with Kirara, Wanderer and Sayu, we need to have characters that have kits that can be extremely useful in the overworld and offer a lot of mobility. Now moving off of unit talk, I am a meta channel, I apologize. Let's talk about more general quality of life stuff. I'ma just say it, Genshin is way too stingy with rewards, and besides level up materials, most items in Genshin aren't really desirable, like oh wow, furniture. I love getting my region tree to level 50 so over half the show up can be… furniture. <laughs> One of the main reasons I stopped halfway through Sumeru is just because I felt like I was getting nothing. In earlier Genshin, leveling the statues meant a lot because it meant that your stamina bar also got increased, which was massive for exploration and combat, which doesn't happen anymore for some reason. The quest that allowed us to unlock condensed resin I thought was cool as it was something players would actively want, because it would make the game more convenient, which was nice, and then in Star Rail we have the self-modeling resin item, which is a very cool reward that if transferred to Genshin a lot of people would love to seek out. Impactful rewards is such an easy way to keep people engaged and there is a million ways to go about it whether it be weapons that are as good as the catch, things that make farming more convenient like condensed resin, or things that overall just improve the gameplay like the increased stamina that was just never expanded, but eh, next thing. To be fair, I've already given up the fact that Genshin will add any more permanent endgame systems, but... Abyss. Can we at least make the Abyss better? The Abyss right now is a complete mess, we still have a cooldown problem when you reset and start the chamber too fast. While although is minor is very fucking annoying, it also causes a bigger problem with weapons like Sack, TTDS and Widsith that are all heavily cooldown reliant. Also the Abyss has scaled way too much. The early Abyss floor 12s compared to the current ones make them look like floor 9 chambers. Speaking of which, the jump from even just floor 11 to 12 is way too big. We need another floor in between them to make the abyss more consistent. Almost all the blessings are useless and redundant. What happened to things like low tide and high tide that drastically changed the way you build teams? Why has totem just been relegated to being a floor 11 thing? The abyss can have a lot more interesting mechanics that aren't just time trials. I played God of War Ragnarok and I had insanely creative ideas on how to make combat trials interesting in their game mode called the crucible. Sometimes you have to protect multiple zones from enemies, kill enemies without taking damage, kill enemies by throwing them off the map, you constantly die and lose health and the only way to counteract this is by killing enemies. And you know what's weird? Genshin has had some of these things before, but they never really are highlighted in the later floors. And it just seems weird because in my opinion, things like those would make the abyss a lot better than whatever the fuck they are doing to it now. It is in an extremely dire need of change or people will just stop doing it. 
A lot of people have already just stopped caring, even the ones who could clear before. Everything has gotten a lot more restrictive and stolly, and not even the people interested in meta and team building give a fuck about the abyss anymore. Okay, Hoyaverse. You disappointed me with Nahida, making her a baby wrapped in a tea towel, but... 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 I have seen the leaks and Focolores is an absolute cutie patootie, a treat to the eyes, the beauty and the beholder. So, Zhongli is the Geo Orcon, and he's undoubtedly the best Geo unit. Venti, never mind. Nahida is the Dendro Orcon and she is by far the best Dendro unit. Raiden is the Electro Orcon and even though I don't agree, you can also argue she's the best Electro unit. So, so, I have one last plea. Hydro is the strongest element in the game right now, and Yulon and Jingcho are absolutely ridiculous units, and that's why you better make my glorious shining queen Focolores the most unfathomably broken unit in the game. I don't know how, but you must, because not only would it be absolutely hilarious, but, you know, I got nothing, I just think it'd be funny as fuck. <laughs> Also, Nahida was the last unit who was just insanely ridiculous, so please do not fumble with my girl. And well, on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment what you want in Fontaine, as I'd love to hear it and I respond to almost every single comment. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.